Welcome to uh, Primo Times. Happy day, friends. This is a bit of a uh, noisy area. The parking lot may appear empty, but behind me we have some passenger trains and a transit station just back there. So there may be some buses going back and forth. And it's also quite windy here today. I do have my new microphone set up um, mounted. It's on me. And it does have a little uh, sort of a, a wind afro going on. At any rate, today I'm going to go over some details of my Ambo and uh, bring you uh, up to date on all of its features, all of its uh, compartments, and the good stuff. So here we go. This is a 2015 Chevrolet Express 3500 chassis. The ambulance build was done in October of 2015. It was taken out of service in the fall of 2022 and it went to auction several months later in July of 2023. I purchased it in August of 2023, actually just not too long ago. Its overall length from bumper to bumper is 22 feet, 8 inches. Thank you for that. The box is 13 feet, 8 inches long. The box width on the outside is 7 feet 4 inches and from ground to the very top is 7 feet 10 inches, not 8 feet. That's good to know. It's very low. It's uh, really good on the highway. The fuel mileage, by the way, I worked it out from my trip back from Manitoba and I'm getting just under 16 miles per gallon. Can you believe it? 16 miles per gallon. That is incredible. Typically, you would think 9, 10 miles per gallon. Nope, I'm getting 16. For a vehicle of this weight, which is 7,959 pounds or 3,600 kilograms, that is incredible. Just under four tons. Under the hood, it has a six liter or 364 cubic inch gasoline engine. Gasoline fuel only. Boxy had uh, gasoline and propane. This thing is gasoline only. And it delivers on paper about 360 horsepower, which is pretty darn good. The outside is very clean because I just took it to the uh, ambulance wash. And if you're asking, what is an ambulance wash? Well, that's any car wash that this ambulance will fit in <laughs> and it becomes an ambulance wash. So the interior condition is literally amazing. It is very clean. There is no damage on the seat, no rips, no stains. It's quite comfortable. The lumbar is aggressive. It really pushes in on your back. Uh, so you have to readjust your, or at least I do, my seating position on long drives. There is no uh, carpet. Once you get past these huge heavy duty running boards, we have a solid uh, vinyl floor, which is actually what you want. I don't like carpet floors. They are so hard to take care of and there is no benefit to having carpet floor in a vehicle that I've ever noticed. So here we have the center console. In this area, we have uh, like filing cabinet type space. Their switch controls for where the radio used to be, their lighting controls and power controls, their siren amplifier, and of course a reading light, uh, white and red. Red for nighttime, white for the times when you need to see documents. The Chevrolet comes with these cup holders and junk holders, which as you can see, I'm sort of using already. Um, radio, which is, eh, you know, mildly impressive, but not really. And it also comes with the cigarette lighter here, one over here, which I'm using. These microphone clips from the paramedic service I will be removing. 
and General Motors also provides this 110 socket, probably for charging just a laptop or something silly, nothing too fancy. But here is the fun. This is liquid spring control system. So the liquid spring is an incredible feature that is very expensive to install. They're wonderful, but they're very expensive. We're talking over $12,000 to have this put into a vehicle. It does control suspension on all four feet. That is both front uh, points uh, suspension and the rear, but I can only adjust the rear. The computer itself will adjust all four, but I can only raise and lower the rear. Typically, I will run it in normal normal, but I can change the height if I'm trying to get the vehicle over like a snowbank or maybe a, a low curb or high curb, that type of idea. It has cruise control, it has air conditioning, most vehicles do, but not all do. Boxy did not have AC nor cruise. The dash is gray, that causes a bit of uh, glare back on cameras and whatnot on the window. Nothing I can do about that. I might be able to cover the dash with something, but it is not a priority. Here's my VOFO dash camera, which I use for a lot of my traffic videos, including the drive back from Manitoba, which was in the last episode. Up here is a video monitor, which normally sits on the backup camera, the rear camera, which is on as soon as you start the engine. But also there is a dash camera here, which is connected to that, and an interior camera here, which is connected to that. And then there's also, I don't know if you can see it, in the back corner, there's a camera on the right, in the top, in the back, that is connected to that system. And then of course, the backup camera. So those all go into here and then are separately recorded as well, which is a really good security feature. So now I have some redundancy to the forward, although these cameras aren't so hot, they still work. I'll be moving this camera probably over here at some point and then putting another 4K dash camera right over on this side behind the mirror. I like the redundancy, the safety and the security of having a dash camera all the time, but sometimes more than one. So the driving position in this unit is very comfortable. I just installed vent visors, as you can see here. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if I read the advertisement as well as I could have, or they didn't say, and I'm gonna go with they didn't say. Uh, these are absolutely pitch black. They are blank black, like you cannot see through them. And the unfortunate part is, as you can see, the top part of my mirror is actually cut off because I'm holding the camera right where I would normally sit to drive and I would prefer to have these a bit gray so you can see through them. Unfortunately, you can't see through that, so I don't know. Maybe in the future if these break and get taken off, I won't cry too much. Let's take a, a looky-loo around the vehicle. So from the uh, driver's side, the first compartment is what they would call the oxygen cabinet. So when it was in service, you would have usually some spare carry oxygen cylinders in this spot. But in these locations, you would have the huge tanks. And I mean, these ones are big. Sometimes they weigh over 100 pounds each. This would carry two. And as you can see, they have the connectors still here, the valves and the sensors, which are electronic. There's an access port from the oxygen cabinet to the inside, which we could use later for probably a trash type idea thing, and then use the rest of the area for storage. And it's pretty much full height from floor up to the top, about six and a half feet. It's cut off on the top here just a bit and we'll find out why later once we get looking in there and seeing what's going on. The next cabinet is where all the electrical fun happens. This is the electrical or control cabinet. Fire extinguisher, always need one. Two house batteries, 
which are charged from one of the two alternators up front. And then here is the control systems, which actually control everything from all the lights, interior, exterior, warning lights, all the locks, all the different accessories, and they split all the power from the front to uh, both sets of batteries, both the vehicle and whatnot. Now you can see there's been a lot of connection type stuff going on. I've already had to jack into this to get control of some electrical systems that I need already. At any rate, there's the siren amp. It is disconnected, it has to be. And the warning lights on the side, I believe is this connector and that's been disconnected and has to be. Obviously, I don't need to rush anywhere. One thing is that it comes already with the outside receptacle for shore power, basically the term, I guess. So I'll be able to connect when I visit places or when my generator is stored in the back, I can just run a cable right up to here quickly and charge the generator if it's been cloudy for a few days or I haven't driven. I have some of my electrical tools and supplies in here already. There's already 110 power distributed throughout the vehicle and there are the breakers there for it, which I can connect through here later on and we'll be good to go. So behind this part of the cabinet, this wall juts out as you can see a little bit, but behind here is the cabinet on the inside where I'll be mounting various switches and whatnot. So it will be good to open this up and see how much space we have inside and uh, we'll be able to access that area to install rotary switches for lights or fans or different accessories uh, that we're going to install. And on the inside, at that electrical panel, I was able to install some relays, wireless relays, so that I have control of the outside lights on both the sides and the rear, which is very handy. So I have control of both sides, alley lights or ditch lights or scene lights, they call them, and as well, the uh, interior lights which I'll show you shortly. So you'll notice she has uh, six new shoes. I have uh, six new tires installed and uh, it was aligned and they were balanced of course. But these are pretty good tires. They were on sale. They have an aggressive tread but yet they were quite quiet on the road. I've been very comfortable with these. And also, what's surprising, they are 16-inch tires. Although they are light truck, like they're heavy-duty tires, they're only 16-inch, which is surprising. So this last cabinet on this side is the spare tire and some tire accessories. There is the bottle jack right over here, which came with the ambulance. A spare tire, which is actually all, it's like all brand new, that's fine and uh, two wheel chocks, which I grabbed from Boxy. Now this tire will be coming out of here. Uh, I'll have to mount it somewhere else because in here I'll be mounting my generator. It will be on uh, rails, which I'll bring out to run the generator when I want to charge the, the batteries and then push it back. I'll have some storage space in here optionally with that. The front uh, bumper is most likely the place that I will be mounting this tire. The back doors are still causing me grief. Um, I, of course, haven't had a lot of time to get at it, uh, but this door in particular is jammed down in here. Someone tried to force it and they bent some linkages. So I need to work with that in order to uh, gain access. Um, but one of the main holdups was not having light on the inside and I've fixed that so uh, I can now uh, see what's going on. As well I have control of the alley lights on this side as you can see and these things are super duper bright. Holy cow are they ever bright. So this cabinet is pretty cool in that uh, there are two shelves 
both adjustable or removable, I suppose. And right now I have some of my tools. Here's my Milwaukee vacuum. Here's all my Milwaukee tools. And then here is a box of various things that I've ordered and brought in. And this cabinet on the top is accessed from the inside uh, and it's uh, lockable. I'm not sure what the future is for all of this cabinet and space. I'll have to think about it. Um, it's possible this may get removed and the bed may come down this far. I don't know. And then there's another fire extinguisher under here. Coming along the side, we'll skip this just for a moment and we'll come into this front cabinet on the passenger side. Again, this is full height from bottom to, to floor. Once I remove this metal piece here, I think I'm going to do some testing and checking, but it's very, very possible this becomes the bathroom with a, another floor built in a little bit lower, probably about there, because the height on the inside is not quite stand upable. So this uh, floor could be lowered. I would then put a uh, cassette toilet in. And if I do it right, this might also become the shower. But again, uh, we'll find out later if I actually fit, if I can stand up in here, you know, get my knees out straight, if you had to sit on the toilet, that kind of thing. So we'll find out, but uh, that could be the future of this little space. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. All right, so coming in the main entry, one of the really cool things is I have a, a window that we can open. So uh, we can get ventilation here really easy. Very safe entry. We have a handle here to grab onto and everything is marked yellow as if to say, look out, here I come. Now, here's one really cool thing. I told you I have this remote control switch and one thing I can do now is turn on the inside lights. I couldn't do that just until last week. So this side I made low and the other side I made high. You may not be able to quite see the difference, but uh, it's, it's visible from the inside and uh, it really makes a difference uh, looking around and, and seeing everything. So coming in the back, the first thing you'll notice is we have a jump seat right here. It's not super comfortable. It's very 90 degree to 90 degree. Um, it could be used uh, in a pinch, but I really wouldn't want to put someone here for hours. It does come with a seat belt. It is a legally uh, installed seat and I would like to keep it if I can. There's a step light just down here which I will find the wire for in that electrical cabinet back here. And then maybe hook it up to a switch here. I don't know, make it amber or red. I think it's white right now, but if it was red, then you could leave it on, you know, an evening if you were in or out or visiting friends or at a campground, that kind of thing. This net will be coming out. It'll be coming down and it's not hard. It's just uh, some clip mounts, uh, both top and bottom. This drug cabinet will be coming out it won't be necessary anymore. There is some storage space under this seat, which is really cool. Nice storage space for shoes or who knows, anything you want. And then we have the paramedic seat, the tech seat, which uh, doesn't move. It's sort of stuck in that position. But this seat back here tilts and swivels and does everything that you need it to. So I'm going to try and move that seat up here and then we'll just junk this seat. And this one, by the way, has the integrated child seat. Uh, but the only child I have is Maggie and she's a cat, so she doesn't need that seat. The interior from this part right here to the back, back door, just the floor length of the box is 11 feet, two inches. All right, 11 feet, two inches. 
the box width and what I went by here is the wall over here to the wall over here is seven feet. The floor width just from this corner to the wheel well corner on this side is three feet four inches. And here's the tricky part. <laughs> the height from floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling, is five feet six inches. Yes, that's not quite my height. So let me show you here. I will stand up <clears throat> and then <clears throat> that's me standing straight. So I can't. Um, a few of my neighbors have come in and looked around and they've stood up straight in here and well, of course they're not quite six feet. But when I'm in here and moving around I'll either be here doing something with maybe food prep or talking to somebody on the future bench that I build here um, or I'll be on the bed which will be mounted against the wall and perhaps come down. This is that inside cabinet, which I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep. Uh, I think I might have to, though, because up here is the exhaust fan for the, uh, the vehicle to, to send all the bad air out the back. Things like this black handle I will keep. That will stay in place. This black handle will probably stay in place. However, this yellow handle will come off and it's full length on that side. And then I'll take off this, take off this, take off this, but I'll leave this black handle here. There is a crap ton of storage, as you can see, which I've already used to some degree when I travel down in the vehicle. And the ambulance mounting gear for the stretcher, I've already removed the large one here, and then I'll be taking this one off very soon. The storage cabinet under here is quite large and it was used for pillows and extra blankets and different things. And right now I've already adjusted it and I'm using it for my tools. The rest of my supplies and tools and things are pretty much on this shelf. Uh, this is where the incubator setup would have been for newborns. But I'm thinking counter space, and I might be able to, I don't know, extend it out or have some sort of extension idea, a flip out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. That will be all to be decided. So again, this chair is coming out. That drug cabinet's coming out. I'll have to clean up these electronics, take this off the wall, and dress up the wall a bit, clean it up, take off the glove, surgical glove dispenser up here. Um, and then we'll know where we're going from that point. So right here, that's again the outside cabinet, which I think could become the shower or washroom. I would have to cut in a door right here to access that. But I have all the Milwaukee tools, so that might work. Uh, moving back here, here's another storage cabinet. A pretty big one. And again, it goes from pretty much floor all the way up, about four and a half feet. Again, I don't know if I would keep this or not. Uh, removing it uh, or making other type storage ideas out of it may work. At any rate, um, overall, I think I am extremely happy with what I have to work with here. I had thought that boxy was the way to go and I think boxy would have been amazing to try and, and make work but the ambulance is going to be a much easier project to to work with the structure is again it's still square like boxy was but the advantage with this unit is it's in prime shape. It is in immaculate shape. 
I've just had it rust proofed. That was done a week or so ago. And those guys gave me good reports on what they were finding underneath. The electrical system in this, although it be complicated with that control system, I have been able to jack into the wires and get myself, you know, the current lighting from the ambulance is already working. And I'll be able to uh, do more with those existing wires. I may have to leave that Ace Tech box in place um, and just get into the wires that I need to run the fans, to run the heat, to run more lighting, and to run power systems and whatnot. We'll find out. But I'm happy with the way this, this is at this point. And I'm really glad you guys are taking the time to hang around and to stay with me. I think the project is going to go slow. Uh, my health is not 100%. In fact, I had wanted to get a video done in the last two weeks and it has been so troubling with this stupid uh, kidney issue that I've been going through. I was unable to grab the time to actually do a video and I sincerely apologize. But I think now at this point, uh, you know, we can start doing little things. In fact, the lighting was probably the biggest step that I needed to get done. And now that that's done, I can now get on the floor and start working with the lock mechanism right here. Um, and we're going to get that uh, fixed up. But as you can see, that's not without its complications either. So I need to fix that up to get these uh, doors open. Uh, I mean, not an emergency. I can go ahead and do most everything else without those doors, but I'll need them at some point. So I might as well try and get into them while I can. Anywho, you guys are great. I appreciate your friendship. And if you need to get a hold of me, my email address, primo times at hotmail. Don't uh, hesitate in contacting me. Let me know as well in the comments below, please. If you have any suggestions of what I could do with certain parts of this vehicle and what we could uh, do to make it into uh, an awesome adventure rig, which I'm going to continue to do. I appreciate every bit of time and attention that all of you give me. Thank you, folks. You are awesome. And believe me, I need a bit of awesome in, you know, my life. We all do. And I'm getting it from you. And I appreciate that. And you guys are great. So uh, thank you so much. We'll talk to you very soon. Take care. And uh, please take care of yourself and take care of those you love. Bye-bye.